Hi, I'm Stephanie Sutton from Easy Codes for Kids, and today we are going to be talking about recording fairy tale books, physical books, and using our voices and just recording our book and its cover and its pages while we are reading and not showing our faces, okay? It's not as hard as you think. Just follow my steps. Okay, so my son is holding my camera that's right in front of me, my video camera. I am taking my phone, just an ordinary little iPhone, okay? And I set my Hansel and my Gretel up. This is an old library book that my aunt gave me, and it has these beautiful, it's one of the Walt Disney collections for Hansel and Gretel, so it has these really fabulous little cool um, geometric shape Hansel and Gretel characters, and so I'm laying it down. So Luke, could you um, video the book? And all I do is, good job, take my phone and click, 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 and I go through each page, and I'm getting a picture, click, of each page. Click, click, and I try and get most of the, try and get most of the picture in, right? But I'm not being too particular because I know I'm going to edit this in a little bit and I'll capture everything during my editing, okay? Okay, so the first step is accomplished. I went ahead and I just took lots of pictures of Hansel and Gretel on my phone. Voila! Okay, our next step is super easy. We have all of our pictures on our phones right now. And what I like to do is crop out any of the um, pieces of the pages that I don't like. So if I see a corner where my thumb is or another page that is not the page that I'm going to read, um, I try and just either zoom in to make it fill that space or um, I just use my crop tool and I can do that right on my phone using my photo editor on my phone that I use all the time to edit my family's pictures because it's something that I'm really super familiar with. Once upon a time in a small cottage on the edge of the forest, there lived a poor woodcutter and his family. The son was named Hansel. His younger sister was named Gretel. The woodcutter's wife was their stepmother. She was a very mean and selfish woman. One evening, there was so little food left, it seemed they must all starve. The stepmother told the woodcutter that she had an evil plan to take Hansel and Gretel into the forest and leave them there to starve. Get rid of the children, she told him. Then there will be enough food for you and for me. The wicked stepmother persisted. Finally, the poor woodcutter agreed. Hansel and Gretel heard the plan and they were frightened. Hansel whispered to Gretel that he had a plan of his own. When it was dark, he went quietly outside the cottage and filled his pockets with tiny white stones. The next day, off to the woods they all went. Hansel dropped a few stones every few steps. When they reached a place deep in the forest, the stepmother and their father left them to sleep by a fire, telling them they would return soon, but they didn't come back. That night, when the moon rose, Hansel took Gretel by her hand, and following the tiny moonlit stones, they found their way back to the cottage. The stepmother was furious. The next morning, they all went to the woods again. Hansel had no time to pick up small stones, but he had saved a crust of bread, so he dropped crumbs all along the way to make a trail he could follow out of the forest. The woodcutter and his wife again left the children. When darkness came, 
Hansel took Gretel by the hand. They looked and looked for a trail of breadcrumbs, but birds had eaten all the crumbs. Now they were indeed lost and alone. They wandered through the forest for three long days, sleeping cuddled up under trees at night. Then on the fourth day, they came upon a very welcome sight. It was a tiny cottage. It was made of bread. The roof was made of cake and the windows were sugar candy. Hansel and Gretel each ate and ate pieces of the cottage. Suddenly a voice came from within, nibbling, nibbling like a mouse. Who's nibbling at my house? Then out the cottage door came a little old woman. Fear not, children, said the old woman. Come in and dine and rest. Hansel and Gretel were very glad to do so. As soon as the sun rose the next morning, the old lady woke them. She invited them out to see the stable. And before they knew what was happening, she threw Hansel inside and bolted the stable door. Ha ha, she cried. I am really a witch and I eat children. And I'll eat you first, young man, when you have been fattened a bit. Gretel was very frightened, especially a few days later when the old witch heated the oven to cook her and her dear brother. Test it, dearie. Witch, said the witch, I'm going to bake some bread. Put your head inside and see if the oven is warm enough. But Gretel was too smart for that. My head won't fit in that little space, she said. Oh, yes, it will, answered the witch. Look, it's even big enough for me. And she put her own head in. Suddenly, Gretel gave the witch a big push and into the oven she went. Gretel slammed the oven door shut and ran to rescue her brother from the stable. Hansel and Gretel left the old witch in the oven to cook, and then they found diamonds and emeralds and pearls under the beds. They filled their pockets and ran away as fast as they could. Soon they came to a place in the forest that looked familiar. Then they saw their own cottage. They rushed in and greeted their father. He was very glad to see them alive. Their stepmother had died since the children left. Now, with the riches from the diamonds, the emeralds, and the pearls, they could all live happily, and they did forever after that.